Today we're talking about meds. So the med trio, popular, we sell a lot of it. And for those of you that don't know and to keep this little segment complete, that would be Ikex, Fritz Paracleanse, and Fritz Marison, right? So you get an antibiotic, you get a dewormer, and you get an antifungal slash parasitic external agent. We personally, in the store, use them as a trio. We dose all of them right when we get big batches of fish. They come in, and we're dealing with such numbers that, of course, some are going to get sick. And so we dose one dose of each med the first day, and we let it sit. And when we're letting it sit, we're observing the fish every day. That's the most important part, is observing and seeing if something was to crop up. The minute something did crop up, we will change tactics. And the tactic then becomes whatever is present, whether it's ick, fin rot, anchorworm, another disease, velvet, we then will pivot from the trio to a specific med to treat that illness. Now, where a lot of people are going wrong is they'll have a disease. They might even identify it. They might go, my fish has mouth rot. And then too often they use the trio. And that's not the way to use it, actually. It's not that it won't work. It's that it's not most optimal. And so there's a subtle difference there that I think people are missing. One dose of each as a preventative and holding stuff off from shipping new fish to you. Maybe they got way too cold in the car. Like when you know there's a high likelihood these things are going to be sick, that is different than, okay, now I have two days in my care, right? It's been two days, now they outbreak. Or maybe they've been in your care for two years and now your tank gets sick and then you hit them with the trio. That's not what we recommend. We recommend diagnosing and then treating per illness. Now, if you really can't figure it out, then maybe you're going to use a med trio, but I see probably a couple times a week, I've got ick, so I treat with the med trio. That is not the correct response. The correct response is ick x. Treat ick x, you water change the next day, you treat ick x, you water change the next day, ick x, you keep doing that until you get rid of the ick, right? And then you could treat for other stuff you needed to. So I also want to talk about if I was just a hobbyist, right? And some of those scenarios. So in my personal fish room, no longer am I really bringing in a lot of uh, big groups of fish, right? Like, oh, here's 600 cardinal tetras, anything like that. It's mostly uh, like I bought fish for our tank that's going in the living room. It was 25 glass catfish, which that is kind of a lot. Uh, 25, or no, it's 18 glass cats, 25 hatchet fish, and a pair of killies. Now, did I come home and instantly hit them with the med trio? I did not, because I observed the fish in the pet stores. I really put my eye to them and looked at them and really, even before I invested about $300, really looked at them. And I said, I think these are healthy. I'm going to bring them home. I then brought them home. I put them in the tank. It's late at night. I do nothing. The next day, I come in, and I really put my eye to them. I'm looking at them, really looking. Did they suffer any in the journey? Because the journey was a five-hour trip back from Portland. And I'm going, nope, they're still looking real good. Okay, I'm going to feed them. Let's see how they respond to eating. I want to gain information, right? So I put some food in there, and they're eating really well. That's another sign. Okay, they look to be doing well. They're eating well. Maybe they are doing well. I do that again the next day and the next day. And pretty soon it's been about a week and they're all looking really good. And then I lost one hatchet fish out of nowhere. It was just dead on the ground. Hmm, that's weird. But I didn't do anything. I kept feeding, kept observing. A couple more days go by. No more deaths or anything. Maybe just one, you know, I couldn't identify what was wrong. It didn't show any symptoms. I don't know why that one died. Didn't jump to re conclusions. So now it's been almost two weeks. I'm a guy that can quarantine for months and months and months, so I'm not in a rush. It's been almost two weeks, and I go, okay, well, they look to be stable and doing well. I want to make sure that they don't have internal parasites. I then treat it with paracleanse. I put in one dose. I let that sit, and that's what I've done. Now I'm in a phase of actually waiting two weeks. So I dosed Paracleanse once, now I've waited two weeks, 
And I'll be dosing Paracleanse again, because when it comes to internal tapeworms, when we use meds, we can only get the ones that are alive. So we kill off all those, but every day, internal tapeworms are laying eggs inside the fish. And the medicine, the Paracleanse that we use, can't attack those eggs. It takes up to two weeks for them to hatch. So we wait two weeks and we treat again. So we have to break the life cycle. That's what we did the first time. We killed the adult worms inside the fish. And then wave two is coming down the road. We wait. We let those hatch out into juveniles. If we wait way too long, they become adults again. So we wait till they hatch out. We treat them. Now, if you really wanted to be extra careful, you do the treatment. You wait two weeks. You do the treatment. You wait two weeks. You do the treatment. That has like a 98, 99% success rate. Now, assuming I never got ick and I didn't see any fin issues or any other illnesses, I consider this fish to be pretty darn clean. Now it could go in a display tank, right? So that's how I would handle it if I brought fish home and I think they're doing healthy. Now let's pretend that I brought these fish home and day two, there's illness, right? So it was late at night. I put them away. Day two, I go to feed and I'm looking at them. I'm going, Ooh, yeah, that one, it's got a, it's got a speck on it. Maybe that's the start of ick. This one over here, oh, it's got some, you know, it's got some mouth fungus. So if I had one speck of ick and I had mouth fungus, I'd go, okay, I'm going to treat this for mouth fungus because one cyst on a fish doesn't necessarily mean ick, but mouth fungus pretty apparent usually. And in that instance, we use ICX, which you're going, wait, why would you use ICX on mouth fungus? Well, ICX is very good at fungus infections. And then I would also use Maricin. Maricin's going to fight off the bacterial part of that infection. So when a mouth gets infected and there's all the cotton, usually it's inflamed and red. And when you kill that fungus, you leave a big open wound and you don't want that to get the next illness and get infected. So I would treat with one dose of Maricin and one dose of Ickex, and I would observe for three or four days. Would I be feeding the tank in that instance? Yeah, I probably would, because most of the other fish didn't have it, and I'd be feeding lightly, though. I'm not, I'm not looking to feed a ton, um, because when you do use antibiotics, if it's a newly established tank, or you've upset the balance, you can disrupt bacteria. Now, so imagine you have a tank that maybe is sitting dormant for three months and then you bought fish the bacteria colony isn't as robust there and some maricin may disrupt some of it in my tanks because i i quarantine fish and i do this fairly regularly the the bacteria that i have don't seem to act detrimental to it but we have seen people where they're new to the hobby or new tank syndrome basically and they go in and they nuke it with a bunch of meds and then they go hey my water's cloudy and that's one of the reasons why I recommend not feeding. Now, in the store for us, it's different, right? So when we say feed lightly, so let's say I have those 18 glass cats, I've got 25 hatchet fish and a pair of killies. When I'm feeding lightly, that might be, okay, here's one thing of bloodworms. At the store though, if there's 600 cardinal tetras, one cube of bloodworms, I may as well not even feed. That's gonna feed like, 40 of the 600. So then it becomes, how much load do I have to put into this tank to actually get a light feeding? And that might be 10 cubes of blood worms. Can the tank handle that with all the meds? The other thing that I, I think that people are missing, because they're not doing critical thinking. They're going, I read how to cure this. I'm going to follow these directions and it's going to be cured. And for the most part, that's true. One of the reasons I don't like to feed very heavy, or not at all, is because you don't know what's coming next. So in this scenario where I brought the fish back from Portland, it's day two, they've got mouth rot, at least one of them does, and one speck of ick, and I treat those meds. What if on day four, now ick is really bad, and bacterial infections are really bad, and this is going on, and they won't eat? I might have to do more intensive meds. And if I have to switch to a med that would kill beneficial bacteria, I'm gonna be really happy 
that I haven't been loading up these fish to keep releasing ammonia, urea basically, when that scenario happens. So we're when we have a sick fish, we're already hedging to make it the best outcome by not feeding very heavy. People are often very scared of fish starving to death, but you should be equally afraid of too much ammonia or getting them constipated or something like that. And so what I really want to touch on here is there's no one absolute best method. If that really existed, it would be common knowledge for everybody. But the reality is there's a lot of ways to get to where we're going. And so the med trio is the foundation and you can change it based on your needs. <laughs>